to health, uh, kill the crag cats, and then uh, charitably and heroically, uh, five of the party members stay behind to help the merchant Aldo uh, collect his gear, reset his wagon, and get on its way as the rest of the wagon train led by Bjorn had to leave as the weather was quickly changing. We will pick up tonight at the end of that journey, and joining me tonight are... Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Chris. I am playing uh, Radigan Conover, um, human artificer, um, camp cook, uh, cowboy, and all-round swell. Hi, everyone. I'm Tara. I am playing Sithrin, the uh, silver dragonborn great weapon master. And hello, I am Lorne, and I am playing Jalkan Layet, the Asmir Paladin. I am Brendan, and I am playing the great Ezekiel, a half-elven bard. Hi everyone, Nabil here. I'll be playing as Duma Bullstrike, a Minotaur Barbarian, heavy on Zoloft, but that doesn't seem to be ha having any effect on me. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Steve. I'm playing Regis Nine Fingers, Thief Extraordinaire. Hi, I'm Ian. I'll be playing Augustus Gustantine, the Centaur um, Forge Cleric. Come sit by my forge in this cold weather and I will tell you a tale of woe. <laughs> Steph. Steph. Oh shit, I pressed the wrong button. Um <laughs> uh, I'm Stephanie and I'm playing Cassandra Bowman Whitaker. Wizard, uh extraordinaire, for soon to be Arcane Brotherhood, uh wizard, and fangirl. All right, and so with the group split into two sections of travel. Regis and Sithrin, as you were ostensibly hired by two of the other merchants, you went with them to guard the goods. And so your section of the wagon train has arrived. Uh, you have struggled the hill. Finally, you crested the hill and saw the walled city of Bryn Shander. Uh, the snow, however, has begun to fall more heavily and the wind resumes its plaintive moan. Your teams struggle to pull their loads through the growing drifts of snow, while the sky above you darkens. Finally, the lead wagons begin to ascend one of the hillsides, and the broad walls of Bryn Shander come fully into view. They are 30 feet tall, the front gates are 15 feet high, and they are currently standing open. Uh, there are two towers flanking either side of it that rise to a great height of 40 feet, and you see one of the guards uh, sort of from the tower hails your company. And as you see the first caravan start to uh, crest and head towards the gates, uh, a very stout, curly, red-headed young woman steps forward and with great delight greets you. And as she, you know, sees and, and uh, looks upon you, she just says, Well met, travelers. Keep your fingers and your extremities under wraps, lest all will bite them off. Mind your tempers and you'll be most welcome here. Brought goods to sell? The market lies straight ahead. Craving a warm drink? May I recommend a drop of Firebeard's Fire Brandy, sold only at Kelvin's Comfort, located on your right as you enter the market square. And with that, she ushers the first wagon through and held up sort of leans over and you can see her eyes roll as she looks at you, Sithrin, and just says, every time, every time she says that. And in fact, she does say that to every wagon as they start passing through. Uh, and after the first couple of wagons have gotten through, we cut to those of you who are riding with Aldo. And so that is Radigan, the great Ezekiel, Duma, 
Augustus, Cassandra, and Jalkin. As you guys are pushing along, the snow again is falling very heavily. The wind resumes this sort of screech and wail, and you have to yell to hear each other. Aldo pushes his team hard through the growing snow, desperate to reach Bryn Shander before nightfall. Finally, through the growing gloom, you see the walls of Bryn Shander rising ahead of you and the tail end of the caravan's wagon train snaking up the hill into the gates. Carried on the wind, you can hear the calls of impatient wagon drivers waiting to enter the town. Suddenly, monstrous figures appear from out of the storm and rush towards the wagons, and the driver's calls give way to desperate shouts and muffled screams. The caravan is under attack. And with that, I will move you guys onto the map. With this snowfall, your vision is basically held to a 40-foot perimeter. And those of you inside the town uh, see these monstrous figures. Tall as men, but with bodies coated in thick white hair, rush the wagons and leap through the gate, lashing out with deadly claws. Yetis, cries the guard on the tower, waving frantically to warn away townsfolk who've come to welcome the caravan. Then, rising above the clamor of quick battle, you hear Bayorn Steel Strike's commanding voice. We need to get the rest of the wagons inside the gate. Hold them back. Hold them back. And with that, I need everyone to roll initiative, please. All right. We're at row. Aw, oh, seriously? Erp. I actually beat the spread? Oh, for hell, come on. I wanted to come last. Are you also level two still? Level you are one. all we're level, level one. one. Oh. You guys were able to take a short rest during this journey, so anyone who was injured prior to this, you can roll your hit die oh, uh, to you. recover. Thank you. And uh, don't forget the five of you that were uh, hired as guards were also have a potion of health or potion of healing. Yes, I have my breath weapon back, but that will be of any use against Yetis. All right. Oh, you chose the wrong one. With that, uh, Duma, as you guys are basically in the very back of this wagon train, you have just seen out of the edge of your vision a couple of these giant white figures dash through the gates, and you can hear the sound of, uh, you know, just barely over the wind, you hear the sound of combat and people sort of screaming and crying. What would you like to do? Uh... Where did they go exactly? Uh, if you, where did I see them go? Oh, over here. Inside the gates. Yeah. Okay, so I give. Uh, so I see them, and I get out. Obviously, uh, I, I I dash towards them. Wait, it's not a straight line. Can I dash even though it's not a straight line? Yeah, you can dash. Okay. And I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean. You can move through most of these spaces. It's just, uh, you know, you'd have to give me uh, an acrobatics check if you want to try and leap over the horses or anything like that oh, uh, or any of these be... other... Oh, sure. I'll, I'll go for that. I mean, it's going to be hilarious how this is going to turn out. Acrobatics. There we go. Okay. First one coming up. Yeah, that is more than enough. You are able to just leapfrog these horses in your, your large form. Uh, and so that will get you through the gate so you can move your full movement. It should be about there. Oh, sorry, right here or there? Yeah, with your, with your movement and dash, that should put you right about there. And so within your view, you now see these tall humanoid, white shaggy furred creatures with these you know huge clawed hands that are starting to run around and just cause mayhem. Uh, any bonus act? Uh, uh, just a quick question. I just want to, I can't see this character's name. Uh, the one that is above me. Uh, that is just a guard. Oh, that's just a guard. Okay, it's not, it's not the bad guy. Nope. Um, the bad guys do, are these those guys. Uh, the, the young yetis. I do yes. have a bonus action, but yeah, it's not going to reach them. So 
yeah, that's it for me for this round. All right, you have made it inside the gates. The Great Ezekiel. All right, do I have line of sight on any of these yetis? Uh, you would, if, if you can see them, you will. All right, and Duma ran off in which direction? That direction, okay, through, right, the gates. through the open gates. <clears throat> I can just barely see his name bar. Yeah, with this much. heavy snowfall, you guys, yeah, you, your, your line of vision is very much hampered by this. So you do, you have, as you move closer, you can start to hear uh, Bayorn uh, yelling out that uh, they need to get the rest of the wagons inside and to hold them back. Get the wagons. Okay. Um... All right. Um, do I know anything about yetis? Anything they might be afraid of? Give me a nature check, Mr. Book <laughs> Thirteen. You've heard they probably don't like fire. All right. I am going to cast... Or was it acid? Something like that. All right, I am going to cast... Uh, no. uh, I'm going to dash closer to here and kind of hide behind Duma. And that'll be my turn. All right. That takes us to Jalkin. All right. Uh, I'm not sure if I misheard you earlier when you said our vision was 40 feet. 40 feet. Then I can only see out to a range of about 25, I think. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 25 and a little bit. Well, it's not It's not because it's dark. It's because of the snow. No, I know that. It's more... I should have, at usual, 60 feet of vision. Yeah, 60 feet of dark and vision. I changed all your vision to 40 feet, so you should have exactly 40 feet. I literally... I, I've got... Like, if you click... Control L on my token, you can see how yeah, I, my can... vision sort of it's bright until about here, and then I, I can't actually see up to there. I see Ezekiel in dim light, and then it just cuts off. Mm, I've yeah. got you with bright light all the way up to there. Wow, that that is special because I definitely don't have that. All right, um, well, I guess. Uh, that's better. Now I can actually see stuff. I yeah, can I actually see you, a Yeti. I moved you to 60 feet, so... Cool. Yeah. Uh, alright, well, I'm in... It takes little to no effort to get off this thing, right? Oh, no, you can hop right off. I guess I will go to there. Oh, oh boy. Right, uh... So yes, you can see there are quite a few, even within your line of sight, yetis that have started to sort of rampage through. And imagine, I didn't want to fill the entire map, but there are civilians in the center of the square who'd come out to welcome the wagon train. All right. Well, I will not disappoint them. I'm going to take out a javelin and chuck it at the closest one. Okay, I might disappoint them. Uh, that is a hit. All right, that's my turn. All and right. For those of you who can't see, I threw it directly north. Assuming up is north on the map. It is. All right. With that, Cassandra, you, okay. have, you have started to hear these sounds of battle over this rushing wind as you guys have pulled up. Sorry, I was attacked by a cat who tried to drag my headphone cord all the way down. Uh, test, test. We can hear you. All good. Okay, and I can hear you. Great. Um, cat revenge. Yeah, Heidi. Uh, okay, so can I see a Yeti? You can tell me. Can see a Yeti? I cannot. We're roughly... What... Everyone has moved through oh, the gate oh. who's trying to... In... In, in, you can see me, and you saw me throw a javelin directly north. 
Yeah, you should oh. be able to just see that guy, too. Um, also, why is there a Yeti inside the city walls? Because they're inside the city walls. Oh, no, 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 there's one outside. Sorry, I got confused. All right, so... Well, obviously, because they haven't left Yeti. <laughs> uh, okay, so for the one in, I'm yeah, going to use ignore, my... Ignore this guy. He's just there to, uh, as the tokens. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay, good. I figured it out then. All right, so I can just, I can just sort of barely see one. I will command Heidi, my Tressum, uh, to grant me the help action on my firebolts. The cat looked at you when you said all her right. name. All right. Uh, so your cat will fly. And harass the Yeti. Roll your... That is a critical hit. That's double a crit. double crit. Nice. What would we like today? A double-double. Double, -double. double crit. That, what does it you, mean? Yeah, even those of you with your limited vision just mean through this sort of dark sky and snow, you just see this bright orange flame streak across the sky and it strikes this Yeti square in the chest and it this Yeti just ignites and goes up in a ball of fire. Yes. Um, all right. So the, uh, it, uh, in the next round, if I stay in the cart, the cart will just rush in? Or do should I have to move to get closer in? Uh, you see your driver, uh, and it looks like she is trying to get the cart inside as quickly as possible. All right. So I will stay in the cart. All right. Be careful, Heidi. I mean, game <clears throat> Heidi, not real life Heidi. And now it is the guards and yetis. I've got these guys all going at the same time. So this cart with Regis in it will move out of the way. This guard will move up to that yeti. These guys will move. This guard. Go after that Yeti. Ooh. They're going to move into the town. So you see some of the Yetis just start to scatter and immediately just sl slash and slice their way uh, through some of the commoners. And you hear uh, yelling and screaming. Let's see how the guards do. Not well. They are terrified and seemingly completely overwhelmed at this round. And you see a Yeti grab one of them and pick him up and, you know, they're, they're starting to stand off. But that's about where things lie right now. Augustus. Okay, so I can't see anything on my screen. I can hear the screams in front of me. Uh, but we're all trying to get inside the city. Yes, and you can hear uh, Bayorn yelling uh, to hold them back. Get the get them in. Hold them back. Get them in. You cut out. Yep. Hold them back. Get them in. See, so this is the okay. problem with pronouns. Is there a comma in that sentence? Didn't sound like it. It sounded like he was at this point just using a complete run-on sentence. All right, well, we got to get this um, traffic jam out of the way. So let's see, I'll move up here. I'll move between the two carts. So up to the horses is 20 feet. Uh, okay, now I see the Yeti. Uh, okay, let's try and... Uh, on my turn, can I navigate Madden and his cart? kind of through the center, because I'm assuming there's a Yeti on the left and the right, but I can't see. I can only see the left one. Yep, give me an um, animal handling check if you want to 
take try and get the horses in because they're starting to look a little. Come here, you stupid beast, and listen to me. Look at my feet. I'm like you. All right, and Yamadon is attempting to help. So yes, with a 22, you are able to get them to move in. I have another uh, 20 feet of movement, but basically right. I want to get him to a point where we can say, yeah, and he can take off and do a full run. And then I'll go, I'm assuming I won't have any movement left, but next turn I'll go back for the other ones. All right, so moving him 20 feet. We'll definitely get them inside. Okay, so I see that one at the front. So um, as we're moving forward, I will move to the other side, kind of, you know, shimmy. And uh, yeah, they were done. All right. If they have more movement, then I'll let them keep going, but I don't. Yep, that's it for them right now. Uh, Sithrin, you see Helda in front of you immediately grab her weapon and hop out of the wagon. And she just has this wicked grin on her face as she does so. You are up. Okay, so she's going to the one at the back of the wagon, it looks like. Looks like it. Okay, I'm going to go to the one at the front of the wagon. Hop out. And I am just, because I'm assuming he hasn't moved, doesn't look like he's moved or done anything. Uh, no, he, had, he went after the horses and uh, was not able to hit that's what I. That's, 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 that's what I thought. All right. Swing. Really? Yeah, you swing and just <sighs> sparks fly across the uh, stone wall, but uh, the oh, Yeti too, is uh, not... Too close to the wall, damn it. Hopefully I distracted enough that they'll turn to me now. Um, Don't want to move because I want to take out this one and keep away from the horses. Don't have any bonus actions I could do right now. So yeah, that's it for me. Okay. Radigan, you and Aldo are still in your cart. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm going to move to the front of the cart, and I'm going to uh, attempt to help uh, Aldo move the cart in. Uh, I'm guessing that that would be an animal handling? Animal handling. All right. Easily I've enough. You, you're a horse whisperer. You know how to calm them down. Absolutely. Uh Question before I uh, I pull off the final um, uh, action of mine. Um, uh, how long has it been since the Craig Cats attack? Uh, it's been a few hours, so you would have time for a short rest. Okay, so uh, crossbow is not currently a light. Um, uh, my. I was hired by Aldo to protect him in his caravan, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to reach over to Aldo. I am going to hand him a small glowing brooch, and I'm going to cast a sanctuary on him. All right. And I say, keep that with you for uh, for the next couple of minutes, all right? Uh, of course, of course. And with that, uh, we are at the bottom of the round. Uh, Bjorn, actually, oh, another, sorry. Sorry, I have one more question. I don't see Regis Nine Fingers. Yeah, on, uh, yeah. I was wondering why I wasn't on the. Uh, what was your? Order. It was originally eight. Oh, you have to click your token before you roll it. Oh, uh, that's, that's why. probably what happened. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, well, you, you can, can take. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's okay, uh, Regis. You can take your turn now. I'll uh, put you in the tracker. Okay, I um, I'm gonna grab my rapier, pull out my rapier, and head to the closest yeti. Be right here. Yep. And I attempt to thrust him in the stomach. And with that, you are. Unable, you your feet slip a little bit in the snow, and and your rapier thrust just goes slightly wide. Right. Any uh, more movement? Any bonus action? Um, nope. All right. 
Uh, so yeah, so Bjorn runs down to the center of the gate, uh, grabs the horses that you brought through Gust and sends them. He cut it after sends them. Oh, okay. Sorry, sends them forward. And that is going to allow uh, Aldo and Radigan's team to move. All right, which takes us to the top of the round and Duma. All right, uh, Duma sees one of the Gearys when you, uh, when one of the fans moved in, he sees this one. I'm trying to, sorry, I'm trying to think which one I'm going for. Oh, wrong button. Well, if you end up next to one, you can assume it's that one. Yeah, uh, that would have been so much better. All right, so head down to this guy, to this, and I'm going to bring them all down, and I miss. That is a miss. That is our third natural one so far. Yeah. Thankfully, one of them oh, no. has been the Yetis. Damn nimble Yetis. So nimble. The great Ezekiel, you are standing at the center point of these open gates. Right. Uh, which one is Jalkin? Which one did Jalkin throw a javelin at? Uh, I threw the one that right there, Yeti number right. five. The great Ezekiel is going to move here <laughs> and give Jalkin the help action against this Yeti by just being an annoying distraction and trying to Get its attention. All right. Jalkin, it is your turn. All right. Well, with the uh, mighty battle cry of people in my service, for the royalty, I run ahead and I try and take this guy out with a bonk to the head. No bonk. I saved it. I saved it. I got the help action, so that's a 21. Yep, that is. You smash down. And yeah, this this Yeti's skull collapses under your Morning Star, and it uh, is felled. And free action because I don't think it would be anything otherwise. I will fist bump Ezekiel. I do not fist bump. I I a five. Oh, he leaves you hanging. You Cassandra. Jalkin will remember this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Stomps on beneath me. Tell okay. that table later. Uh, I can see the the Yeti in front the in front of Duma. Uh, so I will command again, very similar command, Heidi to give me the help action and roll firebolt. Yes, you did. I'm very proud of you. Ha 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 ha! Another crit, motherfucker! Second damage. Crit. Uh, yeah, so again, this streak of flame lights up, and this Yeti uh, next to you, Duma, and this guard just, its shoulder and its chest catch fire and it screeches out. All right. Wow, one of my. Screens is nearly frozen. The other one is running fine. All right. With that, it is the Yetis. Uh, I'm going to start from the bottom of the screen. So this one is attacking Sithrin. And so it hits you for six slashing damage. Ugh. Uh, Looks like half my hit points. All right, the one here. Yeah, the one that is on fire, you can see it swings, but it, it swings wildly, and the, the guard that is there is able to get his spear up and block it. Uh, 
this one up here has started uh, smashing and knocking over troughs and just causing mayhem and slashing down people as they go. And he's knocked over one of the uh, large uh, sort of burning braziers that is in front of the building and it's starting a small fire. All right, who else do we have left? The one up here against you, Regis. Okay. Um. So it swings, it hits you for four slashing damage. All right, and so the NPCs are going to get a chance to go. So this will be for all of them. Those are all good hits. Uh, so you see the one in front of you, Regis, uh, gets stabbed with a spear. Uh, this one in front of you, Duma, that is on fire, gets stabbed as well. And then Helda rushes in and crushes it over the skull with her mm -hmm. war hammer, and it collapses to the ground. I am going to say... Ooh, out of all of these people, Rafferty is going to race over and start kicking snow and trying to put out this fire. And uh, Duma, you'd be able to hear him yell uh, at Dell to stay in the wagon and stay down. Mm. All right, I think. That is about all of them. Takes us to Augustus. All right. Uh, so we have the one on fire, the one I can barely see up, and um, the one down below. But how many people? And everybody looks to be... Everybody still has lots of health. I um, can't see the... Um... Yeah, I know that uh, Scytherin's health bar hasn't changed. Oh, did someone go down? There we go. Oh. I still had it selected, that's why. Uh, I don't know if I can see... Oh, way over there. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to bring in... Because we're trying to get the horses in, right? So let's... Uh, I can go back 20 feet and bring the next one in. Actually, 30 feet. All right. Uh, these The one in the middle is moving... Uh, thanks to Radigan, so you can get to the one that uh, Malchus and Cassandra are on. Give me an animal handling. Oh, it says I have inspiration. I'm going to use that inspiration. <laughs> Motherfucker! Holy shit! Gus! Dang. Waste yes. Of an inspiration. You uh, are easily able to calm these horses down, and they immediately just, yeah, you know, go from sort of rearing and snorting and stamping to you know, being ready to follow your lead. So they will move through when they are able to. All right. And, um, no, she was out of range for a healing word when I came out here, so I'm done. All right, Sithrin. All right, really not much else I can do, so I can try and take another swing at this Yeti in front of me. Uh -huh. Have you hit it, Yeti? No. No, unfortunately, you see the snow and the wind, uh, you are just not able to get purchase and hit this creature. Any movement, any bonus act. Oh, I was muted, sorry. Um, no, I don't want to move, and I've got nothing else I can do, so I'm going to stay here and probably go down to the next round. <laughs> cool. Wait, wait. Um, you know what? I will second wind. Second Ooh. wind, right? Yep. That could keep you from going under. Yes, I will do my second wind. So it's 1d10 right. plus my fighter's level. Uh, and then that'll be it. 
seven d ten plus one. Full Ooh, health. Nice. Ooh. And at uh, top of the screen, Regis. I'm going to take another swipe at the Yeti with my rapier. That is a hit. You stab through, and there is this spray of red blood that sort of mats the fur and the snow around you. Okay. Yeah. How badly did I wound it? Do you look like it's pinching? It flinched. It doesn't look like it's terribly hurt at this point. Okay. I'm going to stand my ground. All right. Radigan, your caravan is about to head through these gates. Okay. Um, I have officially used both of my tier one uh, or my uh, my level one spell slots. Um I am going to draw my crossbow and uh, rack a bolt and um, uh, ride the cart. And as soon as I, you know, ready in action to uh, shoot a Yeti, uh, as soon as I can see one. And also I'm going to guidance myself. All right. Can you do all that? Uh, I can ready in action and I can do a bonus action. But so, guidance is an action. Guidance is a bonus action. You know what? You're right. I'm wrong, so I did not guidance myself. No guidance, but your your held action has moved in. Uh, so at this point, you can see Regis is in combat with a Yeti to your left, and there is the one that is ravaging uh, around the streets up here closer to straight edge. Hmm. He's uh, he's in front of a fire that he has just started. I don't have a crossbow bolt. It streaks through the snowy sky and strikes him. And again, yeah, you see this spray of red blood. And it howls in. It looks pretty badly hurt. All right. Uh, free action. I'm going to tell Aldo to uh, turn the wagons north and go. And I'm going to step. Or would I be able to do that? Uh, yeah, you haven't used your movement. It was the uh, the wagon's movement that uh, you were riding in. Okay. So you can leap off. And Bjorn will yell, which gets this wagon moving. Is that all the wagons? Or is there one more still outside? There is more than one outside. Mm. All right. That one has started to move in. And top of the round, Duma. Duma sees one of the young Yetis over here, so he's going to just go. That would be 30. Is this fire? I'm assuming it is fire coming from one of the buildings over here? Yes, the Yeti has uh, knocked over one of the burning braziers that's on the ground here and started a fire. Okay, it's on ground level. Okay, I'm going to try a call attack. Okay, first attack coming in. Maul. Come on. I'm going to get a lighter weapon than this. Yeah, unfortunately, your maul, just in the on this ice and snow, you swing and you just cannot get good enough purchase. And this yet is easily able to dodge out of your... That's it for me. The great Ezekiel. All right. Uh, the great Ezekiel is going to do the same thing he did last time. He's going to run up here. Get up to this uh, this young yeti and uh, give the help action All to right. um, to Jolkin. 
Friend, come help me. This is uh, not my forte. Jalkin, your hand is, your yep. fist is hanging in the air. Yeah, I'm uh, going to come in and smack him with my morning star. Yes, and with another massive crunch. Uh, just... I, I, I'd like to point out that's the second time I've scored nine damage, so it's another mighty nine. Sweet! Um, yep, and just brains and goo splash and spray everywhere. And you did that one-handed because your other your fist is still in the air, waiting for Ezekiel to bump. Oh, it. No, no, no. It, it, it was the fist that I that held the Morning Star because the other one has a shield launch to it. Ah, Cassandra. All right. Uh, cor- the second course, same as the first. I will. I will get a little closer, just towards the front. Uh, help action, advantage, blah blah blah. To which Yeti? The one by Duma? Uh, yes. That is the one I can see. Or I have line of sight to anyway. All right, that hits. Just grazes off the creature's shoulder. You see it smoldering and it, you know, sort of panics and and knocks and pats the fire out. Good job, Heidi. I will look back and check in on Gus. Is Gus, um... Gus is is able to get in, right? Uh, Gus seems to be uh, doing all right at this point. Okay. That ends and, my turn. All right. Uh, with that, uh, you do hear uh, the sound of uh, the guards at the top of the tower uh, sort of yell and, and uh, scream and you see Gus just at the edge of your vision down here on the ground. Uh, another Yeti sort of pop around the and head towards the uh, empty cart and horses. <laughs> but he hasn't got there yet. Yeah, I'm not going to let that go until we're done the Yeti thing. You know you could. I'm All right. sorry, I, I was ignoring the stupid joke. Yeah, just totally ignoring it. Uh, so the Yeti next to you, uh, Duma, that is on fire, is now going to turn its rage on. And that is another critical failure, as the, you know, the spark on its shoulder obviously has uh, gotten its attention and is unable to do it. Uh, Sithrin, you are almost shoved aside as Elda comes up to your side, just in time as the Yeti takes another swing at you, and critically strikes you with its claw for seven slashing damage, and then Helda is going to rip, uh, and smash it for six damage. Uh, the other guards are not close enough to do much else. Uh, you hear uh, the guards on the top of the tower. Uh, you, I would say Ezekiel and Jalkin and Regis, you can hear from where you are uh, that he is sort of screaming and pointing and saying, they're, they're getting over the walls. What? And that is going to take us to Augustus. All right. So, well, this has worked so well so far. Uh, let's finish up protecting the flock uh, with... Uh, yeah, I'll get that one moving because that's still... that's Is that Helda's cart or whose cart is that again? That was Jalkin's and the Great Ezekiel. Well, well, well... We will help him get in because they do not deserve to lose their livelihood for this. So, uh, animal handling, I guess, a third time as I stare down the young Yeti 11. Shit. 
kind of rethinking my steps now, but eh. A 13. Yeah, they you are able to calm the horses. Uh, there is nobody to, you know, sort of drive them or move them in at this point, but they are they are definitely starting to calm down. Is a butt slap to get them moving forward something that would be a bad idea? Well, you could always try it. I don't know much about horses. I mean, I'm half horse, but... Okay, sl it. Yeah, slap it. All right. Uh, give me another animal handling check. Oh, so if it's a good touch or a bad touch. Exactly. Yeah, it's okay. a pretty good touch. You you remember back to how your parents used to give you just a, a good slap to get you moving in the mornings. And <laughs> you you slap it across the flanks. All right. Oh, and uh, there was a... Uh, sorry, there was one more thing. Uh, in preparing for this Yeti, I wanted to check one thing. Because it's a bonus action. Uh, up to a minute. Searing Smite. All right. Come and get me, you furry bastard. And my hammer will be glowing. Or my mace. Okay. The power of Morden compels you? Exactly. Uh, Sithrin, you are bleeding, but so is this yeti in front of you. I'm afraid I gotta actually hit something tonight. Seriously? Just misses. And. Not happy. Any movement? Any bonus? Nope. So long right. as it's distracted with me, it can't wreck, wreck me. I'm anywhere else. All right. And you can see just over your shoulder the what appears to be a Yeti just at the top of the edge of the wall over there. Oh, wonderful. You brought friends. Regis. Okay. Um... Uh, so the nearest one you can see is up on yeah. the wall here, right and now. you can still hear uh, sounds of people screaming and moving around uh, coming from behind you. And even over this, this loud wind, you hear what could be one of the loudest swear words you've ever heard coming from... Uh, well, I'm going to pull out my short bow. Um, do I have a good range of um, hitting it? Yeah, it's about uh, 40 to 50 feet away because it is 30 feet up on the wall. But, okay. uh, you know, you can see it even even through this uh, driving snowstorm. I'm going to take a shot at my short bow. Uh, Unfortunately, yeah, you fire upwards and the wind carries it in your arrow almost loops behind backwards it's just this huge gust blows it away right. but you think in this in this uh, snowstorm maybe nobody saw until you hear uh ezekiel just sort of muffle a uh, a snick i would not laugh at someone making a mistake oh this was pretty funny Crap. you're right i shouldn't impugn your character like that <laughs> Okay. Any movement? Uh, Any both? You know what? I'm going to try to scale the wall. I can scale the walls. Right? Yes. Press. Give me a uh, strength check as you scale these walls. They are uh, stone and wood and sort of loosely packed. But uh, yeah, so it shouldn't be terribly difficult, even though it is cold. Ooh. Oh, yeah. You are easily able to clamber up the wall. Uh, so you're climbing the tower, so with that, uh, you're about halfway up the tower at this point, because they are 40 feet high. Okay. Just let you know I have my dagger tucked in my uh, teeth. You know, my uh, my teeth are holding onto my dagger, kind of like a pirate. Oh, we haven't done that to that one guy cut his All head right. off. All right. We'll see if, uh, we'll see if it uh, gets stuck to your lips and... Uh... Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. All right, Reckon. 
Okay. So from where I am standing, Aldo is heading north and heading into the city. Um, at least I think. Uh, he's pulled up and sort of parked. I mean, it's a stables that are over here on the left. So it is typically where they were. But so they've sort of hunkered everything together. And uh, you can see Pettywinkle and Aldo uh, are, you know, being looked after by Oisha, who has her uh, giant greatsword drawn and is, you know, just sort of circling and protecting. Okay. And uh, this one over here, uh, can I? Oh, sorry. I need to slide. So this one over here is, is in Duma. So, you know, Duma's fine. Um, I hear stuff on the wall and I hear commotion here. So I'm going to head back towards the gate um, and see if I can do something out here. Uh, so I do see a young Yeti over here threatening this cart. And Gus is there. So I am going to... Uh, I've been doing a lot with the crossbow. I'm going to pull out... So Radigan will pull out a brass lantern that has a lot of gear work and a lot of weird crystals attached to it. And when he opens the aperture, um, a bolt of fire comes out. Sorry, what was that? I missed what you said at the beginning. He's casting firebolt from a lantern. Oh, from a lantern. Okay. No, I, I got the idea, but I just didn't hear what the beginning was. This character is going to be so fun. All right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this lantern opens up and there's a bolt of fire blasts out and streaks past Gus and slams into this uh, Yeti who immediately catches fire. You hear it just sort of shrieking and patting the fire out and, and grabbing handfuls of snow to uh, try and extinguish it. Dang, I should have been doing that this whole time. Yes. Uh, okay, uh, that's it for me. All right. Uh, bottom of the round, Bjorn will get this cart. So Cassandra and Melsha are in. And these yetis that have appeared on the walls, uh, you can start to see that uh, they are slashing and, and slicing down guards, but also starting to grab pieces of rock and try and rip them off of the walls. And uh, you hear Bjorn yell, almost there, as uh, another wagon moves through the gates. And, you know, the town's defenders, alerted by the screams and sounds of fighting, rush along the wall to join the battle. Meanwhile, more yetis have clambered over the battlements and passed the gates. We'll be hard-pressed to hold the gate with these beasties dropping down on us, growls Steel Strike. Quick, to the walls, everyone! And you can see at the far end... Uh, those yetis are appearing. Duma, you are... Oh, Duma's not having so much luck with the freaking mall. Might as well make do with what I really can use, my horns. Going to... Do this. Sorry, not that. That too. But here it comes. Oh, hey! Yes. Yeah, you lean down and just... <clears throat> slice and smash your horns uh, into the, the Yeti's skull and you can sort of shake your head and you almost lift this creature off the ground and, and toss it aside as it lifelessly slams onto the And also, it, oh, it's dead. Okay, never mind. Eat it there, Uh No, no. Damn it. That's it for me. I can't All see right. Can't see anything else from my side, so I'm guessing everything's okay here. The great Ezekiel, you can see uh, a yeti at the top of the wall trying to rip one of the uh, stones loose. From All right. Um, how how um, high up is the wall? 30 feet, and the towers are 40 feet. 
All right. Um, and does the, the Yeti notice me? It is clearly looking down in your direction. So uh, you being the most colorful of the trio there, you would assume it's probably. Right. Uh, the great Ezekiel is going to uh, take the dodge action. And just try to be a target that's hard to hit. All right. Jalkin. All right. So any easy implement used to climb the wall? You've just seen Regis uh, fairly easily scale it up it using his bare hands. There's also a doorway and stairs that you could uh, run in as Okay, so in order to get as close to Yeti 10 as possible, how much movement would it take? It is 80 feet to climb to the top of the tower because the stairs are uh, moving back and forth. And to the wall? Uh, to the wall and climbing it. Um, I mean, if you go up the tower, that would be 50 feet. Um, and with your moot and then a, if you dash you would be able to get to the top of the wall in front of the Yeti with a successful athletics check I will attempt that then alright I will do that then you will absolutely do that so I guess I'm right about there uh, you're just cresting the edge, yeah, and you easily uh, get your hand over and leap down right in front of this Yeti. Hi. And that's my turn. All right, an impressive physical feat. Cassandra, you have been brought into the town and are basically in the center of the square. You see it is littered with sort of dead bodies and, and corpses of Yetis and humans alike. and uh, Heidi is still over here next to the fire, which is starting to burn up the side of the building. And you see Rafferty uh, attempting to put it out. Uh, okay. Let's see what she has. To help. If I cast... No, Mending wouldn't put out a fire. Present digita... Pre... Would present digitation put out a fire? No. No, Okay. So I can't really help there. Uh, do I see any more Yeti? Do I see... Do I see all our friends? Well, hold on. I'll get off the cart. Five, ten, fifteen. Twenty. Let's see if I can see the Yeti. Twenty-five. All right, I can just see the Yeti, so I'll recall Heidi... Heidi will give me the help action for this one, and I'll protect. Well, she's uh, too Gus. far away. She's not. Gonna, she's only got forty feet of movement. Oh, I thought they had a hundred feet of movement. It's okay. Uh, then I will just. Uh, you know what? I'll use up one of my spell slots, and I will. Um, and I will magic missile uh, this yeti. Ooh! All right. Roll your d four. All right. Don't I get three at first level or no? Uh, so you get four missiles at 1d4 plus one. Okay, so I have yeah, to hit this. So three. that is 16 damage. damage. So yeah, these four bolts just streak out of your hand and <laughs> each of them smash this Yeti and he is blown off his feet and into a large snowdrift where he almost disappears. Come on, guys, get in! That's the end of my turn. All right. Tis the Yetis. Uh, the one in front of you, Sithrin, is going to turn and strike at Helda. And will manage to strike her for five slashing. And you see her stagger back and uh, as the sort of rivulets of blood start to 
streak down her, her neck and chest. The one on top of the wall rips off a chunk of stone and is going to attempt to throw it at you. At whom? At uh, Sithrin. Would they not have disadvantage because right next to me? Oh, no, not that. The one at the other end. Okay. Yeah. Down here. And that is going to strike you for uh, four bludgeoning damage. Okay. I can deal with that. Uh, the one in front of you, uh, Jalk, is actually going to try and grapple you. Oh, and, shit. And uh, actually, I think it just does it because it just says it's a DC 12 to break the grapple. Uh, so, yeah, so it's going to grapple you and attempt a claw strike, but it does not manage to uh, get a claw strike. But you are, you are currently grappled. Uh, this guard is going to throw his spear. And is going to strike the Yeti that is grappling you. So uh, it is a glancing blow, but it does do some damage. And you you hear this Yeti sort of howl in anger. Mm -hmm. uh, that is pretty much it for them. Gus, give me a perception check, please. All righty. I mean, all righty, Roo. Uh, just off at the very edge of your sight, uh, through this driving snow, you see what appears to be a humanoid figure just standing very still. Like Yeti shaped, or I can't tell. Smaller than Yeti shaped, human sized. Uh, have the looks, horse with a twenty-two. It looks like a young woman. Well, have the okay. So the horses that I sent off last turn, they're gone, right? Yes. Yeah. They at the end of the round they moved into about there. So uh, it's just you said just at the edge of my vision, which is forty feet, right? Yes. Okay, so I will move 20 feet forward, uh, and I'm going to continue moving forward. Uh, oh, shoot, i got to move the map. I don't think I can actually move 20 feet that way. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's theater of the mind, this. Okay, uh, yeah, so as I get about halfway there, can I get a better idea of if it's a real person, or am I getting suckered by a White Walker? Uh, as you move closer, give me another perception check. Just as this driving snow is getting in your face and your eye. Oh. As you move closer, you see nothing. There's no one there anymore? There is no one there anymore. Uh, okay, so I'll use my last 20 feet to double check. All right. Yeah, you move through, and I mean, this is deep snow, so you're you're moving slowly. But Long as you legs. get to where, as we're, when you get to where this space is, give me a survival check. Please. There is nothing here. You find no footprints, no markings, no sign that anyone was here. Just drifting snow. The storm is a bewitching mistress. I should head back to the city. And, uh, wait, can I, because I haven't, you can I double move back to the city? Or no, because I used the survival to look. Uh, you used your survival as the action. You were right. searching for uh, signs of someone. No, I don't think I'd call out. Um, that was kind of like that stereotypical, um, uh, mirage siren thing from movies, so yeah, go with that. Okay, all right, Sithrin. 
Um, you can do it. I can do it. Asta Labor protects me and guides me. Uh, where the hell is my great axe? There it is. <laughs> Fucking, oh my god. <laughs> Bitch, you ain't getting my gold now. You miss and you just catch Helga giving you just the lightest side eye. Oh, I'm. Oh, I have no words. Yeah, I, I just kind of glare back at her like, don't, don't, don't you dare. Don't even say it. Don't even think it. <laughs> All right. Regis, you are halfway up this 40 foot tower. Okay. So um, with the rest of your movement, you are able to complete climbing the tower, which will give you... Can I make you, it on the top? Yeah. Yep, you make it onto the top. You still have, uh, let's see, you had 20 feet. You still have 10 feet movement. Okay. Uh, just curious, this area with the Yeti, are they directly below me or are we on the same level? You are 10 feet above them right now. Okay, I'm going to scale the balance. I'm dangling right over uh, these two. All right. Are hanging over, watching them. I'm going to attempt a uh, death from above next round. Okay. Radigan. Okay, so... Uh, you've you've just seen Gus wander off into the snow. Uh, damn fool's going to get himself killed. Um... Him. Damn fools are cleric. Uh, are we technically speaking an adventuring party yet? Right now, we're just caravan guard. But we, but but it will, but it will lay the foundation of us becoming a, a, an adventuring party, where we will go off and and find adventure and get rich, and I will join the the arcane brotherhood, and you'll do whatever it is you do. Uh, Missy, you're you're speaking at about a ten. I need you to bring that down to about a six. All right. Um, so I see uh, Gus has wandered off. There's still Yeti on the walls. Um, I'm gonna move back in. Is there a way that I could see from here to get up? The uh, there's a door about there, uh, which you can climb up the tower with. Uh, but you've also seen Regis. Uh, actually, uh, you you know you wouldn't have from where you were. Uh, uh, so yeah, you see doors and stairs, uh, and you could also potentially climb the wall. Okay. Uh, do I hear any more yetis inside uh, uh, inside the um, uh, the entrance to the city? You don't hear any uh, yetis inside. You hear the sounds of fighting along the walls, so you assume that. Uh, like off the map, there are other yetis that are climbing the wall and fighting guards. Uh, so you do still hear sounds of sort of panic and fighting, but it seems to have moved up. Okay. Uh, then Radigan is going to uh, enter the door and he is going to start. All right. Give me an athletics check. Uh, okay. You do not uh, get up the wall. It's just icy and slick, and you are unable to get a purchase. Uh, I was trying to use the stairs, not the... Oh, the stairs. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought you were mm -hmm. asking me to do athletics to see how many stairs I... Six. Nope. Uh, so it's... Six stairs. Yeah, you get, you get six stairs, and then you... you uh, oh. Oh, no, uh, the stairs, yeah, you can you can climb up the stairs. It is 80 feet as they zigzag back and forth the 40 feet uh, high of this. So with a dash, uh, you'd be able to get up uh, 60. I will dash. Okay. And with the bottom of the round, Bjorn uh, just keeps yelling encouragement and... Uh, actually makes eye contact with you, Ezekiel, and you just see him shake his head at you and just say, bravest thing I ever saw racing up with bare hands to help out everybody else. Or the craziest. And he will grab uh, this last cart that is now driverless, and you see him fairly easily uh, for a dwarf swing up on top of it, and he will move it over into the <clears throat> and with that, uh, you hear more uh, yelling and screaming and 
clambering over the wall here next to you, Jalkin, you see another Yeti and another one climbs up over here. Top of the round, Duma. Duma, well, from where he is, he can't really see anything. Uh, can I make out where most of the fighting is taking place uh, along the wall? Like, is it coming up from in this what's particular your, area? What's your, what's your passive perception? Uh, 13. 13, yeah, with that, I mean, your ears just sort of swivel around and you can hear uh, the sounds of fighting coming from atop the there, and you still hear the sound of combat going down here. Uh, and you've heard Bjorn yell uh, that, uh, you know, you've heard him yell, quick to the walls! All right. I see something over here. Just the icon. I can't think of who it is. So, oh, that's a guard. Yeah, I'm... Oh, Charge a guard. him. Okay. Gore him. Get him. <laughs> Good for nothing, extremely... guard. I'm extremely tempted to do that, so 20. Yeah, I'm just pretty much going to run down uh, run down here in this general direction, but it's going to be pretty much a dash. So. All right. Yeah, and with that, you can see there are a couple of yetis that are up on the wall here and one that is still down in the corner fighting uh Cithrin. okay so that was 45 movement can i use uh if i stop is my dash done for or can i use a remainder i mean like i dashed up till here that was 45 feet I mean, I have yeah, like you can another... you can split you can split your movements. You can you can continue going. So it's like you took a break. It's not like you can take a full action because your action is to dash. But you could stop, look around, and then figure out like oh. whether you wanted to turn left or. Okay, perfect. So I see uh, Scizorin not doing so well. She 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 seems really pissed off. So I've run up right behind her and I say, "Tag, you want to tag?" That's pretty much it for me. All right. The great Ezekiel. All right. Um, <laughs> so the great Ezekiel's going to try and climb the wall. <laughs> Can you go like diagonal up and uh, and along the wall this way to try and get uh, to where Jolkin and uh, that Yeti are? <laughs> Well, you could move, I mean, it's 15 feet across the ground, and then it's only 30 feet up the wall. So with a dash, you'd be like Jalkin. You'd have the ability to uh, make it up the wall. All right, I'm going to try that. It's not going to go well. Oh, no, this would be great. Athletics check. That's a five. Yeah, that is, uh, that is you, you know, icy fingers just... You just cannot get enough of a grip. You are not able to uh, climb up. And what, I've already used my dash to do that? Uh, no, because, I mean, that would have been... Your attempt would have been to try and dash to climb. Because uh, it's 15 feet to get there, so you still have 15 feet of movement, but, you know, your action of climbing is uh, is a failure, so you still have 15 feet of... All right, then uh, let me get a rope out as my interact with an object. All right. And that'll be it. Jalkin, you are currently grappled by this Yeti. Yeah, he, he, he needs to get a little uh, morning start in the face. Okay. Ooh. I am not... Another like, nine. These are actually rolling a six. I'm rolling better than average damage here. Yeah, you... Manage to get one of your hands free and you bash your morning star down and just, you know, half of this uh, Yeti's head sort of crumples in, but he is still on his feet, but he is very badly wounded. Uh, yeah, that'll be my turn. Cassandra, you are still at the gate. I'm going to call out for Gus. Gus? Gus, are you okay? 
Did I hear that far away? Because snow you kind of absorbs sound. Uh, give me a perception check. You do not hear it. It is carried away on the wind. Do I even see him? Uh, or would that like take up my whole? He would action? be just out. Yeah, he would. You'd have to move outside to be able to see him because he moved forty feet away from where he was. So currently, that would be out past your line of uh, sight. You'd have to be outside the gate in order to uh, actually see that. Okay, so. It's, it's okay. okay, R2 and C3PO. You can let the gate close. Wait, did you just call me a robot? No, I'm saying it's like Hoth. You can let the rebel base close up. I'm Luke and I'll be safe. Yeah, you can always just cut the horse body open and have your human body go inside of that to, for warmth. That's how centaurs work, right? That was my plan. You know what? I'm going to 510... Just step, just right outside, and I'm going to be like, do I see Gus? Uh, at that point, yes, at the very edge of your vision, you see Gus about 40 feet away, looking down at the snow. Gus, what are you doing? And, oh, uh, but I will tell, uh, because I'm not going to be able to make an attack this round, I will tell Heidi to give uh, Cithrin the help action can she make it there 40 feet of movement she can just barely make it there thank you i want to hit something once tonight Please. <laughs> i got you covered while i rp i'm going gus what are you doing get inside Holy fuck, I just realized I still have inspiration. Fuck! All right. With that, it is the Yetis. Uh, this one up here is going... That is currently grappling you. Jalkin is going to try and hit you with a claw. And does manage to just find a section of your armor and his claws pierce and slash into you for six damage. This Fantastic. other one is going to race past, climb up, and he is going to try and shove Regis off the wall. Uh, give me a strength check, please. Okay. Yeah, he climbs up and just tries to shove you with one hand, and you are easily able to uh, hold your footing and prevent him from doing so. This Yeti will move to there, rip off a chunk of rock, and just drop it uh, on the guard that is beneath there, and that guard is just squashed. <laughs> Did one move oh. out of my engagement range and thus would prompt an attack of opportunity? Sure. Was that guard wearing me? Save that guard. <laughs> no, it's more the one that tried to push Regis off because he was there and then he went away. Oh, okay. Where is he? I don't know. I saw one move north. There's no more north, though. Uh, was it this one? I think it must have been. Weird. Yeah. So, yeah, so he climbed up the wall over there. So he is there. That one is gone. Uh, this one is still fighting you, Sithrin, and is going to take a claw strike. That is not going to hit. The one okay. on the one on the wall is going to rip off another chunk of rock and throw it down at Helda. 
that is going to miss, uh, but Helda for her action is going to disengage as she looks at you, Sithrin, and just says, you got this, you got it. <laughs> and she is going to dash and move away. And she disappears into the snowstorm. All right, that takes us to, let's see what the guards can do. Twenty-one. All right. This guy charges up there, stabs that one with a spear, and you see racing down the street now, a couple of more guards are starting to show up and put out the fire that is on the building here. So along with uh, Rafferty, they managed to put it And now that is going to be it. Augustus. All right. So I'm out here. Um, I didn't hear her first. Her second one, she didn't yell, right? No, oh, I've been uh, yelling the whole time. And I am also loud, like in real life. Yeah, you, you, you heard her the second time. When she moved outside and she yelled at you, you would have heard her. All right, then. Can I take a quick perception check and then double move back to the gate? Make sure, sure there's no one around? Yep, give me a perception check. You see a yeti that is climbing the wall of the tower just almost to the top, right about there. I can't see your ping. It's, uh, I see it. I see it. It's the one to the south of you, uh, us, right? Yes. This one? Yeah. Oh, okay, there. But no girl? You don't see a girl out there at all? Out of character, I'm saying. Nope. And nothing in the snow where I was looking. So Nothing uh, at all. Uh, we will head back, but I'll do, I'll only move, uh, 30 feet back, and... Uh, apparently, oh, I do have it. I'll pull out my lice crossbow and try and knock that one down. Okay, I'm back. Yes, you manage to fire your crossbow and it sticks in the back of this yeti who turns and just howls angrily at you. And I guess I'd be there because I didn't go the whole 40. All right. Sithrin, you have a Tresserim that is flying around giving you the help action. Uh, come on. That is a hit. And I didn't and even need to. F oh my god, okay. With a 14 slashing damage, your great axe cleaves the yeti in front of you in half. Fine. Oh, thank God, it's dead. Uh, oh. But you hear the one on the wall above you just scream out in rage. Uh, your movement, any bonus action? No bonus actions. Uh, Duma is behind me. I'm going to duck around him. And just, because, um, yeah, the only yeah, he's left that I can see, at least, are on the wall, right? Yes, they are up on the walls. And yeah. you can see there appear to be two above you, and you don't see any guards or anything in the tower. And as you squeeze past Duma, you see the dead body of a guard under a pretty big chunk of rock right there. Do I see a way up the tower? Uh, there is a door and stairs that uh, you can climb up. Or scale the walls. No matter what I do, I wouldn't be able to make it up there by the end of my turn, would I? That is correct. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to scare the walls. It's just going to make me a relatively easier target. I'm going to go inside the tower, and then I'm going to start climbing the stairs. All right. Um, you are able to get uh, about 10 feet up the stairs, so you have 70 feet left. Balls. All right. 
Eh. I'm in it now, so my next turn I'm just going to dash up. <laughs> All right. Regis, you are standing on the edge of this tower. There is a wounded Yeti in front of you, and there is the other Yeti that is still currently grappling Jalkin, which looks really badly hurt as Jalkin has smashed half its head in with his Morning Star. Um, okay, well, I, you know what? Since I'm, I think, in a pretty relatively safe space, I'm going to take up my short bow and I'm going to fire at the wounded uh, Yeti closest to me. All right. And 14. So if you're firing at the one right next to you, you will have disadvantage. Okay. Did you want to use your rapier instead? You know what? I'll use my rapier. All right. And that is a hit and with that you manage to uh stab this yeti and pierce him right through in his chest and there is just this spread of blood that comes down this matted fur as he falls limply over the edge of this tower okay. and the guard there just gives you a nod of approval as he you know pulls <laughs> his spear out of this dead body any movement any bonus actions I'm going to move a little closer to the other Yeti. Maybe All right. stay on top, though, on the bottom. Okay. So you're still 10 feet above him? Yep. All right. Bjorn will continue yelling encouragement, and he gets all of the wagons. Oh, yep. Sorry. Radigan. Uh, where do I exit this tower? Right there. Right there, okay. Uh, so I am above, uh, like on the top of the tower? You're at the top of the tower. You are 10 feet above the top of the walls because the top of the tower is 40 feet. The walls themselves are 30 feet. Okay, uh, so everything just goes weirdly silent while I'm in the tower. It's kind of strange. Um, I'm going to step over to the battlement there because I know that there was uh, there was combat there, and I see... You Some. see Jalkin being grappled, and uh, you see Regis sort of just at the edge of the uh, tower. Okay. Um, that case, I'm going to uh, sort of reach over and raise the aperture of my, uh, uh, of my amazing lantern, and just kind of, you know, scorch the edge. Yep, it... Uh, it grazes uh, their arm as they try and quickly turn and get Jalkin in the way uh, and use him as a human shield, but it manages to strike his shoulder and you hear him just uh, grumble and growl. Any bonus? Uh, sadly, no. All right. So with that, yes, Bjorn gets the carts lined up. He yells some encouragement. Uh, Regis and Radigan, you see just at the top edge of the wall, coming over the top, is another one of these Yetis. Uh, and with that, we're going to take a five-minute bathroom break. Yay! How you guys doing? Well, I'm doing good. I'm really... I really want to know who that lady is. Yeah. yeah, that's. I'm a little upset that I didn't find her. Oh, she's gonna die. Or she's gonna kill I, us all. Got like what one in four odds of hitting something again? Don't worry, she is going to to uh, Heidi's going to assist. Oh, she's and, gonna follow me into the tower. Yeah, that's what I commanded her to do. And, and oh, okay. Sorry, Tara. The one whole and done. time, you were like blinking, attacking the post in. Uh, Robin, Robin Hood, Hood Men's Heist. Yes. 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 yes, I was freaking blink. The, I ah. was the first, you should, like, you should give Hood a performance Robin. check to see how well of a carving you make. <laughs> yeah, nice little drawing on the wall there. So I slashed my great axe. You were sharpening it. Yes, I was sharpening it. But fun fact, uh, I was kind of, I was like, 
I need to find some god to pray to so I can hit on my next turn. And apparently the dragons have a god, Astilabor, who is the dragon goddess of acquisitiveness and wealth. I'll bear back. She represents the draconic desire to acquire and treasure wealth by doing so gain status. So I was like, hey, there she is. She's too neutral. She's all about wealth and money. And like, there you go. There's my god for this character. This is a god I didn't know about before. I only knew about Bahamut and Tiamat. Where did you find this god? Uh, honestly, I just Googled Forgotten Realms Dragon Gods. It's back when there were, you know, more than just chromatic and uh, metallic dragons. There were the, you know, neutral dragons. Yeah. This is a pretty well-designed fight for level one characters. They did well. Yeah, like, you know, one hit takes them out, but you just gotta fucking hit them to take them out. Good oh, Lord. no, not one hit. They're, they're, they have somewhere in the realm of 12 to 15 hit points, I'm assuming. Because... I, no, 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 I'm just going by the fact of I hit the one guy for 13, so he's still up. I don't care. I took mine out in one. Don't 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 take away my delusions. Well, I'm not saying you can't hit hard. I mean, I, I was doing better than average damage for the longest time. Watch her roll double ones next time. Fuck. But on the off chance we do uh people do want to do uh, Dragon Age. I actually just, like I said, I bought the Faces of Thetis and the expanded uh, Dragon Age DM get I'm so excited. I can't wait for it to come in the mail now. I am back. You know they're selling copies of 401 games. Of the Dragon Age? Yeah. I just oh. saw it yesterday. I did not know that, honestly, because I've Honestly, I've never really looked for Dragon Age stuff there, mm -hmm. um, but Indigo had it for like twenty percent off. So, oh, awesome. eh. wait, Honestly, I just realized it's... something we can do. What? Salt Marshes comes out in like two weeks. Yeah. On the twenty-first. Yeah. So I Salt have Marsh? a copy that's been pre-ordered, so we could just run Salt Marshes. I was wondering take, if someone take was a little more prep that. on my end, but. Yeah, like I did suggest it earlier tonight, even. No, it didn't I, happen. Yeah, I, I don't remember that, but that could be. I me remember you suggested it, but I thought you were talking about in like in general terms, not like, hey, does anybody want to run it once you know Storm King Thunder is done? Yeah, no. I thought that's... you were talking generally, not specifically. My apologies. Ah, uh, no, that's fine. I'm my feelings aren't hurt. And well, the again, above considered... you will. See. Well, here's the thing. Considering it's a bunch of interconnected adventures, we could decide to split up who's DMing what. Uh, well, the first three are the U adventures, so that is one series. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's designed that way. Um, yeah, but I know there's, there's is, separate is tiers like, one, two, and three. I yes. think I see another lizard folk in my future. I think we all play lizard folk. That would be kind of yeah. cool. Because I was actually just going to say, I was just going to say, you know, Salt Marsh. I'm, I'm kind of thinking, I'm kind of feeling lizard folk as well here for Salt Marsh. But that'd be cool. If wait, we wait. Like do we want to go all lizard folk, or do we want to go all aquatic? Because then you could open it up to Triton and Sea Elf. What are you say? Okay, so if we do Triton... Forgot about them. Find you their have... elemental evil, and everyone forgets about that. If we do Triton, I can roll up Ursula. Looking for Winthrop. Yes. <laughs> you know what? I'm feeling this now. I'm feeling. I'm feeling an aquatic character themed Salt Marsh campaign. I love how we have this whole interconnected no. world we've created now. Well, as soon as Sithrin gets a plus one axe, she's going to name it the uh, Giant's Bane, which was Alga's axe. Yeah, but the question is: Does anyone from Icewind Dale know of Hollis and the Dale? I think this was before their time. Hmm. But they know about Winthrop. He came here as a child. 
it oh, was no, a wouldn't. tantrum you could never forget. It wasn't this isn't afterwards because you guys have the graphic novel. I've yeah, I was, yeah. The remember we got the fan girl in our party, and uh, like by me throwing in uh, Augric at the gates, this sets it uh, in and or post Storm King. Well, and right over there, there's a Winthrop Woodland Warriors recruiting station. Are yes, they like the Boy Scouts? Yes, they are. But they're all, they do two things. Worship Winthrop and practice rationing. So you're Lord Baden Winthrop? Baden Winthrop? Oh, no, I'm not nearly as creepy as Baden. I was more going for the Ron Swanson when he's running the um, the Scouts and Pawnee. They're learning rationing. It's an important skill. So not Are they like the junior campers? Yeah. Do they get rubber weapons? Oh, that's a good idea, but only because... Um... Oh, wait, it'll no. Make... It'll no, make go ahead. completely useless in a, uh, in a wood woodland situation? What I'm hearing is they're the, they're the Winthrop youth. Yeah. Oh, God, don't. Don't, don't pronounce it like that. That's so, not so, cool. So they give out free brown cloaks to everyone who, uh, who, who joins... <laughs> I feel really bad for this, but in yellow stars. You took you took something so creepy and made it so much darker. <laughs> Phew. Got that joke in under the radar. I'm just glad we you stopped the Yeti jokes. jokes. <laughs> oh, not Yeti. Oh, I'm not done Yeti. I beat you to it. It's not jokes, it's just the same joke over and over and over again. And it's terrible every time. But I think the part that you're not getting you is... You need to go take a break and use your... Clear your sinuses. The only kind of joke you can tell over and over again are um, jokes about uh, Dorian Gray. Oh God! Well, I want to smack old. you for that so hard. You see, Dorian. Uh, when, how old is old. how old is your child, Brendan? I don't have one. Well, I I don't know if you're allowed to make dad jokes like that. <laughs> hey, where does Dorian Gray shop? How do you know Dorian Gray jokes? Like, why is there more than one? Forever twenty one. Dorian Gray jokes, they never get old. I've told that joke so many times to the same person. No, but it's yeah, such but... an oddly specific. You either have to have watched League of Extraordinary Gentlemen or had a like not, English books. Not so, everyone's going to get it. So, it's listen, hang, on, hang on a second. So, hmm. our standardized tests uh, that we take when we're in like elementary school had a shortened version. One of the one of the English ones was a shortened version of the picture of Dorian Gray, the portrait of Dorian Gray. And how do you shorten that story? Here's Dorian Gray. He's never aged. Oh look, the painting got destroyed. Now he's old. Basically, oh, it's easier. It took about um, it took about forty five seconds to read, and it took out. I haven't actually read the original book, or not book short story, uh, I guess. But his painting, magic, the end. They they brought it down to like a third or fourth grade reading level, and that was one of our our little stories we had to read for the standardized test for the English oh, test. Thank God they didn't ruin. Uh... Oh, it is the picture of Dorian Gray. I thought it was the portrait. Yeah, the time. no, he has a portrait in the picture. Yeah, the the, the it's the the picture of Dorian Gray is about his portrait. In Endgame, here's a spoiler. Yeah, I'm not that big a dick. I'm not gonna. No, no, no. You want to know a spoiler to Endgame? There's a fight! Okay, uh, one of my favorite Endgame scenes, it is a spoiler, but it's not like, oh my god, I ruined hey, it. That's it's not a, a trailer, movie. it's not a spoiler. That's a spoiler, no taco, spoilers. The taco there, there's a spoiler in the chat now. 
Is there? There is. There's a spoiler in the game chat. Oh, wait, wait. We're being... Tara hasn't seen it yet, so actually, let's stop. Oh, I don't care about spoilers. Go ahead. Uh, oh, it's, it's still it's... not fair. Okay. It's it's a literal picture of, like, a car spoiler. Oh, okay. No, not... and you're right. The, the taco thing isn't a spoiler. Ant-Man drops his tacos. Uh, he didn't drop then... his tacos. It was forced out of his hands. By someone who then called him weird, and then the Hulk gave him two of his tacos. It was very sweet. I liked it Professor, a lot. That was like, everyone's an asshole except Professor Hulk. I am so glad they brought... I never read any Professor Hulk, but I read about it, and I really like the idea, so I'm glad they did that. And they didn't make him gray. Oh, Grey Hulk would have been... Oh, you mean like... Oh. Didn't they have Grey Hulk okay, in one of the Hulk movies? Uh, no, no, no. They did actually have a moment where he turned grey before turning green. <sighs> Wasn't he a little grey when he wouldn't turn in the last one, when he wouldn't turn in the Hulk? Yeah. Uh, he was like kind of grey-green. Yeah, that, and that's, that's the reference. Like the, There was that, and then at one point in Ragnarok, I think he had a grey tint until he went green. Did they ever have Red Hulk in the Hulk movie? No. no. Uh, to be fair, Red is Hulk character, movie. Thunderbolt Ross. I know they set Which up for it. Old. Like they had, they had, they had the setup for it. They could do it. Yes. I mean, you have to introduce. Well, when, when was uh, the last Hulk movie? Uh, the, the, the would Norton define one. the last Hulk movie. You mean like, the last movie of the Incredible Hulk? The last that would movie be the Incredible Hulk. Cinematic units. Uh, oh. I think it's the one where they. Yeah, the Incredible Hulk, the one with Edward Norton. No, it's the one where they kick him off Earth. It's Planet Hulk. Is the last one in the Marvel uh Cinematic that's the Universe. Ragnarok. No, wait, that's not Ragnarok. That's the one before Ragnarok. No, no Ragnarok was the last... Okay. Before the, the, before the Avenger movie. title movies, Ragnarok was the previous iteration where Hulk was featured in a movie. Can we just admit that the best one was the one where he gets shot by the military a lot with the guy with the white mustache? I think that was the one before with Norton. Okay, the guy with the white mustache you're talking about is General Thunderbolt Ross. Yes, that one. He's Betty's father. Yes, that one. That was the best Hulk one. Not that's, Wait, was that the same the... one with the poodles? No. The, guy the poodle one Hulk. is the Ang Lee one, which was weird. The one you're talking about is the one that was filmed in Toronto. The Norton one. Edward, the Edward Norton yes, one. Like with Edward Liv Norton Tyler one. as uh, Betty Poor Ed Ross. Norton. Can we talk about Ed Norton for a second? Poor him. No, I think he went weird. Didn't he? Did he? He, he, he went on a tangent of blaming Marvel for not bringing him back. And yeah. I, I mean, would like to see but, him as. Uh, but that was, wasn't that Edward Norton's fault because he was being a bit of a, uh, you know, see you next Tuesday? That's why they didn't. Yeah, oh, he, was yeah. Being a, he was being a bit of a dick. And his, he was a really good banner who was reluctant to be the Hulk. And Ruffalo is very much a, you know what? He's another side of me. I don't want to see him all that often, but there are times when he's needed, and I can bring him forward when I do. Honestly, is everybody back? It's been. Five I, minutes. I, yeah, I'm ready. yep, I am ready. Oh, uh, before we get back, uh, two more seconds down below. Uh, we we stream for extra life, so in the doobly doo down below, make uh, consider donating to extra life. Also in the doobly doo down below, we are part of the Heroes Wanted Discord group. And uh, and streaming group, so check out the Discord and check out our our associates. Thank you. And we really apologize to all the children that we just ruined Endgame for. What you can? The director came out and said that if you hadn't seen it by uh, Monday of this week, spoilers are available to the general public. I don't so think pretty much... the director gets to make that choice, but let's go. He said to wait all until right. Monday. Smog the dragon dies. Vague. Top of the round is Duma. All right, I see uh, Sitherin uh, open the door and head outside. Uh, sorry, not outside, inside, up the stairs. Yep. So I follow her, but I dash up the stairs 
so I'm that'll be 60 feet so I'll be inside all right you are inside you have 20 feet left to reach the roof all right that's it for me all right the great Ezekiel you attempted to climb the wall and were unsuccessful I try again uh, but first I take the the rope that I have in my hand and I throw it up and I say Jalkin catch can I get the rope up to Jalkin? Jalkin's a little busy rappled. at the moment. Can I get the rope up to um the greatest up to Regis? Uh, that is a forty foot throw. Uh, give me a dexterity check. Oh, thank God! Eleven. <laughs> it goes up and. It doesn't quite make it to the top of the 40 feet before it starts to fall. Uh, Regis, I will give you a dexterity uh, check to try and catch it if you wish. Okay. It's not going to be easy, though. And Regis leaps for the rope. Grabs it. And you are able to grab it. Uh, you reach as far you know, you stretch out, stretch out, and you just grab it in your hand, and you you now hold the rope in your hand. Mm -hmm. okay. Do I feel comfortable climbing up the rope with him holding it? That's I'll up wrap, to you. I'm going to wrap it around... Uh... It's not your turn. Oh, okay. All right. I'm just going to... I'm going to have the rope in my hand and climb with the rope uh, just in my hand, but not putting my weight on it yet. Up the wall. All right, give me an athletics check. 19, natural 20. <laughs> yep, you are able to start scaling this wall. You, uh, you have the rope in one of your hands, so you feel a little more secure. Uh, so you are able to, that will get you 30 feet. That gets you to the top of the wall. All right, uh, I'm assuming my action was to throw the rope up. So uh, that's it for me. Yes. Yeah, and so you get to the top of the wall. You see there is a Yeti uh, bearing down on you and also one that is currently grappling Jalkin that looks to be in incredibly bad shape and probably is about to... Jalkin. All right, well... I guess I should give my guy a sense of humor. Uh, so he's going to, again, take his Morning Star prep himself, try and strike two, and assuming he does end up killing it, he's going to have words with it. Oh, yeah! He is just going to, you know, smash it over the head like three times or more. I didn't think of how many words I'm saying. Like, Mama said manners make it the man! Are, and are you, you all right? You can't, you can't tell where the white fur begins and the bones that are exposed... Uh, and as it just crumples down to the ground, and I will say it actually falls off of the wall down past the great Ezekiel and splats down here. And then I am going to turn evil eyes on Yeti 1 and walk over there. All right. Cassandra. Uh, as I was saying before, Heidi is giving the help action to... Sithrin into and following her until I say otherwise. Um, and then I'm just gonna I see that Yeti climbing the wall and I'm gonna use magic missile. Alright, roll your D4. Oof, maximum damage. All of them strike this Yeti and it you can see it scrabbling and attempting to hold on, but it is it falls and it is dead before it hits the ground. And then I'm going to show. And it just crashes into the deep snow and disappears. Nice. And I'm going to turn to Gus, uh, Gus and go, Gus, you coming? I presume Gus is heading back. Yeah. Yes, I am. I'm heading back, but I can't really spawn too much on my turn. But yes. Oh wee wee. All right. I'll keep an eye on you, but five, ten. Uh, five and ten. All right, I can still see him. Good. I will end my turn here. All right. 
this Yeti will race up to you, Jalkin, and attempt to swat at you with its claw. That is not going to be enough. You are able to easily parry it away with your Morning Star. This guy is going to move on to here and he will grab a large chunk of rock and it will smash down on the horses below here. This one is going to, seeing all the commotion on that side, actually is also gonna rip off a chunk of rock and it smashes down on this wagon right there. Is that my wagon with my things in it? Well, You're not sure where wagons. your wagon is at this point. I can't see it. There's a tower in the way. Yeah. Uh, but you... Actually, I'm not sure any of you would hear anything at this point. Oh, really? Uh, none of you are... Uh, Cassandra, you would actually be able to see it, and you see Rafferty uh, actually uh, scream and race over to where that wagon was that was just hit by uh, this large chunk of rock. Dell's his nephew, isn't it? Yep. You guys killed him. Augustus. Wait, All what? Right. We killed the nephew? Shit. Um, so one last look, because I can make it in with my 40 feet easy, uh, for the mystery person in the snow. I will just say even passively, you do not see any, anybody or any form. Um, was that related or do I know any stories of anything related to that? What was that memorial outside the city that we passed? Uh, that memorial is, uh, I mean, you just barely saw it in the snow. You didn't have a chance to go and inspect it or look at it or anything like that yet, but you definitely saw one. I mean, uh, I'm assuming I've been here numerous times because I've been serving the communities in the area was the, the only reason I was asking. But otherwise, then I'll just... And Gallop passed. Cassandra. You gonna go save Dell? Save who? The the little kid that we were corrupting. Oh I can't oh where's the which wagon got fell? I can't see it. Unless yeah, it I can't. It doesn't point it uh, out. say what that was. I'll point it out. I'll point it out to him. That one. And it's the one that Rafferty is in uh, front of and uh, sort of vainly trying to make his way through. And then I'll double move to that. I can't oh, do wait, anything wait, this wait, wait, round. Don't, but... don't you, you have, have healing, healing word? word? Oh. oh, yes, I do have healing word. I hope, boy, that there's nothing sticking in your kidney because this is going to hurt. And healing word him. All right. Uh, and with that, yeah, you start to, you, as you get there, you see this, you know, smash sort of wagon and uh, debris everywhere. Uh, and as you cast the healing word, you, you see uh, the young boy's hand start to sort of move and flex and, and sort of reach out for you. Ooh, a nice seven. Good job. All right, Sithrin, you are climbing the stairs. Yeah, I don't think I, I dash up. I move as far as I possibly can, and I'm pretty sure that's all I can do this turn. Yep, you have to dash, uh, and that would let's see. I think you got fifty. You are just about at the roof entryway, so you pass uh, Duma going up the stairs, and you are nearly at this trap door. Uh, We're playing that hopscotch is with each other. Closed. <laughs> all right, <laughs> get the door, Duma. I'm right behind you when you pass me. Wolf. All right. Regis, you are on top of the battlement over here, and you see a yeti that is currently uh, in a fight with Jolly. 
Well, I'm going to shoot him with my short bow. That is a hit. And yeah, your arrow strikes true. And again, just this spray of red covers the white flesh of uh, this yeti as it is, roars. In is Regis a rogue? Oh, yes, I am. Then you should get sneak attack. Yes, you should. It's 1d6 damage. Yeah. Is there something I can... Um... Uh, in the bar on the left, there's uh, dice rollers, and uh, oh, you oh, yes, should okay. have a d6. Yeah. Also, you can do, like, slash roll space 1d6. Okay, so... Okay. All right, so... Yeah, five, so... It uh, it is a very large wound, and this this yeti actually staggers back a little bit, but is still on his feet. Uh, any movement? Any bonus? Uh, no, I'm gonna stay where I am. All right, Radigan, you are at the edge of this tower as well, watching as this arrow smashes into the yeti. Uh, you know what? Um, I like what uh, I like what Regis just did, and um, I'm gonna. Uh... Pull up my crossbow in my other hand and um, follow suit. And with that, that Yeti is going to be staggered and will fall backwards off of that wall and collapse down into the soft snow beneath. Wooey! All right. Uh, do I hear any, uh, uh, any more Yeti scaling the wall in our vicinity? You don't hear that. What you hear is the piercingly loud voice of Helda as uh, she comes out of the snow to your left, Cassandra, and uh, you can see that she is just sort of shepherding the last of sort of people and things inside. And you see her ax and shield are spattered with blood and as she falls back, she calls out, that's the last of the wagons, close the gate. But no sooner does she speak than a hulking figure steps out of the storm beside her. An ancient yeti with claws like obsidian knives and cruel eyes that promise a cold death. The creature lets out a terrifying howl as it plants itself athwart the gate. There's a word for you. While more yetis rush in behind it. If the gate isn't barred soon, the townsfolk will surely suffer. Is it equidistant from the towers? Yes. Excellent. Uh, that's the closest I can get Radigan to a place where I can sort of see over the wall. Yep. Um, I assume that I'd be somewhere around there, but uh, let's pretend that I'm standing on the wall there. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, I think I'm good there. Uh, so I've done my attack, and... Uh, I'm going to uh, just look down and go, ooh, that's a big doggy. All right. Big... Now we are at the top of the round. Do you guys want to end it here for the night, or do you want to keep... I'm, I'm fine going. Way. All right, top of the round. At least one more round, yeah, at least. All right, sounds good. Duma, you will uh, race past Scytherin. Uh, smash open this trap door and you find yourself on the top of the tower. All right. So that was uh, right the there. remainder 20 feet up, right? Yes. All right. So I've, I... Oh, one of the Yetis is right next to me, so I'm just going to make space over here. I'm gonna, that'll be the remainder 10 feet. And... Are you going to charge him off the wall? Tell me you're going to charge Stop. him off the wall. Do That's it. what I thought was happening. That literally was my thought. Okay, horns coming yes. in. Oh! Yes. Nice! nice. <laughs> he messed with the ball. And yes, I want to shove him uh, because you know, reasons. Because you can. Exactly. All right. So roll me a strength check. 
I am seriously going to punch myself if I fail this. As, 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 sorry, strength roll? Is that... Oh, uh, straight strength. Ooh. Oh, Matt, wow. Why? Well, you, you have can I, strength. Athletic, can I do oh, no, it's an athletics check. Yeah, go athletics. Yeah, that was nowhere. Yeah, you sorry. Chance. You, you smash into him, but, I mean, his back, you can actually hear it sort of crack, and you hear the sounds of just sort of bruising and bones cracking as he is up against this parapet that you, you drive him into with your horns. So he is definitely looking very badly hurt, but uh, he is still on the wall with you. Grr, that's it for me. <laughs> The Great Ezekiel, you are at the top of the wall here. Uh, you hear the sounds of roaring coming from below, and uh, you see that this area of the wall has been cleared of yetis. Are you serious? I just got up here. Uh, help! <laughs> All right. Um, Ezekiel's gonna... Yeah, Ezekiel's going to rappel down with the rope. All right. And I will say, Duma and Sithrin, as you went into the tower and climbed up the stairs, uh, and Radigan, you would have seen this as well, both of them, there were large wooden beams that were stored in this tower as well. That you would assume is the, uh, the beams to bar the door. Ah, oh, okay. How much movement speed is it to to repel down the wall with the rope? It's still only being loosely held in uh, Regis's hand, so uh, it would be it would be thirty uh, feet of movement to uh, to repel down. I guess I will do that. How fast is falling speed? Instant. I think there is actually a time now, isn't there? It's an optional rule of 60 feet per round. Yeah, you're not going that far. So, yeah, so you are able to easily rappel down. Uh, you are back down on the ground. Oops. All right. And um, I will stay there and hold the rope so Regis can use it to get down. It's like, I guess, around one of the, um, the crenellations of the castle. I would assume, or the, the fort, town wall. All right. Yeah. Come down, Regis. We shall help. Okay. Regis looks at his bow and goes, mm -hmm. You can't shoot All something right. that's under the gate if you're above the gate. <laughs> Y'all can. All right. Uh, so these bars for the door, do I see them? No, they are in the towers. Uh, only the people that climbed the stairs would have uh, seen them. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, I'm going to make for the rope and climb down. Probably right. having to dash because I'm not sure how well that would work. Yeah, you'd have to move and then dash to get down. But yeah, you are down on the ground next to okay. the Great Ezekiel. Well, how much movement would I have after getting to, say, here? Uh, you still have 20 feet of movement. So I will get to there and go, Oh, man, that's a big guy. Okay, I'm done. All right. Cassandra, you see a couple of the young Yeti just at the edge of the gate, and this ancient Yeti that has pushed past and is standing in the uh, the center away. And you hear Helda yelling to uh, close the gates. What can I do to help close the gates? Uh, she points to you at these two tall, you know, 15-foot heavy wooden doors, and... Uh, she just says, just just close them. Once they get closed, we'll be all right. But we've got to get them closed. All right, so I will... you can give me 
a strength check. Oh god. Uh, to, to try and close this large wooden door. Watch her do it though. Watch her do it. We're watching. That's a save, not a check. Help me somebody. I yeah, there is there is a, there is a drift of snow in the way unfortunately and so yeah, you 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 try and push and shove, but it does not uh, come closed. Help! <laughs> Just somebody help! All right. With that, it is the young yetis. Uh, this one is going to race over and attack you, Duma. <laughs> and it's going to hit you for five slashing. Ouch. I the still one that Duma. is... Injured in front of you is also going to attempt to close. Oh, crap. And hits you for another three slashing. How are you looking? Almost hit. Hitting the floor face All first. All right. Uh, these ones are going to just... I won't Dash bend my in. They're just going to move in and start. Actually, this guy's going to come in. He'll see this guard and take a swing at the guard. Who is just about to help fight the big Yeti. And that guard goes down. Uh, you do start to see more guards come racing down the side of the wall, though, uh, running down along the length of it and start to climb the top of the tower here. This guy is going to race in and seeing Cassandra is going to take a swing. That is going to hit you for five slashing damage. Okay, ow, 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 ow. This guy is going to move over and throw his spear at uh, the large yeti. That is going to hit. Uh, that is also going to count against the one down there, that young yeti. And a couple more guards... See, this guy is still alive. His spear is going to come down on the one that just killed the other guard. So that Yeti is now injured. Right. All right. Which takes us to the big Yeti. And he is going to... Actually, no, before that happens, the other members of here are going to race out and take some swing. Man, Cloud Full of Rocks is great. He can phase through walls. Yeah. I know. One of uh, one of these screens is just having a lot of trouble with uh, Roll20. Uh, they go as guards. That is enough to kill that young Yeti. Uh, Rafferty is going to pull Dell out of here, uh, look at Gus and just say, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. And going to run him into the back of this house for safety. Oh, very good. Well, the kid won't want to be an adventurer now. Oh, he may want to more, even more. Such is how life goes. And Yamadon is going to pull out his crossbow, and that is going to hit the yeti that is next to you, Cassandra. Okay. Please kill it. Oh, but God. It is now the big yeti's turn, and he is going to move in and take a couple of swipes. One at Oisha, one at Cloud Full of Rocks.
neither of which hit. They are both... Uh, where'd the second attack go? Yeah, neither of those hit. Uh, two tens. They are both nimble enough to uh, dodge and duck. Gus. All right. So um, my um, spell from before, my sacred... Oh, what was the name? Uh, Searing Smite, sorry. Lasts until you strike something. It's a minute, but we've been within a minute, so... No. Oh, wait, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I thought you said a minute had surpassed. No. Okay, so what I would like to do, and tell me if I can't do this, is I have to move at least 30 feet for a charge. So I move there. I'm going to smack with the Searing Smite uh, the big one, and then with my offhand, I'm going to strike the small one. You can certainly try. Roll me an attack. I mean, you don't have to, uh, I mean, you know, you don't have to call the Searing Smite until you hit, so that is no, going to hit. It, 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 it yeah. affects the next melee weapon attack. It's the spell yeah. Smite. yeah, so don't, don't call it before you roll, is what I'm saying. No, it's a, it's a spell smite, not a smite smite. I know, but there's no point in saying it before he rolls because it only oh, goes if, off if he. No, no. no it, it, it regardless, the next it. weapon attack he makes that hits, regardless whether he wants it to or not, has the spell effect applied. Yeah, it goes off yeah, even if I. Miss. Even the right. What I'm saying so, is, uh, nine damage. Saying it before you roll is meaningless because it only matters if you hit, uh, and that does so. That is going to be nine damage. So yeah, this streak of radiant energy burns up along the side of the large yeti, and it roars out in sort of surprise. And, and my bonus attack will go to the less yeti, the letty, if you will. I will not. <laughs> that <laughs> does not hit. And uh, that's bonus action and done. Yeah. All right. Sithrin, you have finished climbing the stairs and are at the top Finally. of the tower. All right. Um, that one is the one Duma hit. Yeah, this one are is they... very badly injured. This one is not injured. And that's the one that's attacking Duma right Actually, now. Actually, no, sorry. Mildly injured. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, how bad is Duma looking? Pretty rough. Pretty rough. All right, you know what? Sorry, Duma. I'm going to go for the one that's looking the most hurt to try and take it out. I have the help action from Heidi. Yes, you can hit this time! Yes, Yay! and another 14. Oh, yeah, you cleave and take that young yeti right out. Your axe again strikes against the stone only after it's gone through this yeti's body. Boom. And yeah, I just turn around to face the other one. All right. Regis. Okay. Um, I'm just going to get off the bounds and follow um, uh, the great Exico. Uh, okay. I guess is it is there anything underneath uh, where I am? Like, uh, was there anything like a yeti there or something? Uh, there's no yeti there. You hear uh, what sounds like a much larger one coming from the uh, the middle of the square, closer to the actual. All of the young ones near you have been uh, cleared out. Okay. Um. And you can hear Helda, another, and uh, Bjorn uh, yelling to close the gates! Close the gates! I'm trying oh, just so hard, guys! <laughs> I guess I rushed to the gates. All right, so you use 30 feet using the rest of your movement. Okay, in which direction is that? This way, right? That would get you to about there, just in front of Jalka. Yep. All right. And yeah, you can see there's a young Yeti that is uh, harassing Cassandra, and uh, you see uh, Helda uh, attempting to close the gate. Okay. So that is your movement. That is your dash. 
Uh, any bonus action? Um, can I attack? No, no, I can't. Nope. Uh, nope. No, there's no bonus action. All right, Radigan, you are still at the top of the tower looking down. You see this ancient uh, yeti below you that is uh, in combat with a couple of the caravan guards and a city guard. Okay. Um, so I know that there's fighting somewhere off in the east because I can assume that I'm, I'm hearing Duma shouting and trying to knock things over the walls and stuff. Um, can I see uh, where Dell and uh, Rafferty were from up here? Or is that just lost? In the uh, you're a little too high. They'd be lost in the snow. Okay. Uh, so considering my options, how I've got a, um, a big Yeti, and can I see the smaller Yeti coming through the gate right now? The one that's attacking uh, Cassandra? You can just see the edge of it. Uh, okay. Uh, I am going to uh, lean over uh, the wall and firebolt it and miss. Yeah, you do miss. You just miss uh, Gus as well. Uh, but yeah, it, it sparks into the wall beside the Yeti. Sorry about that, partner. And that's it. Okay. Uh, with that, we are at the bottom of the round. Uh, Bjorn is going to continue uh, yelling about the gates and uh, will yell at you, Regis, to go get the go get the, the door bracer. Go get it. It's inside the, the tower. <clears throat> and uh, with that, we are back at the top of the round. Uh, coming in through the open gate, uh, or a couple more of the young yetis. And they are going to race through there. Gus, you're going to get an attack of opportunity. As are you, Cassandra. Okay. Yeah, 14. That hits. So yeah, you give it a good smash as it goes by. And uh, this guy. Fate has turned. Ow, why Yeah, you try and me? stab with your dagger. I'm sorry, I'm just really stressed out right now. There's two. All right. Top of the round, Duma. Duma, the one behind me, or the one below me, just... I'm going to bring my ball swinging from a downward, upward slash motion, and... Yes. Oh, that hits. Finally, and I'm going to combine that with this. Oh, stop. There we go. Flows the damage. 13 bludgeon. Oh, yeah, you just hear the crack and breaking of bones as you snap this creature's neck and it uh, falls dead at your feet. Oh, finally. All right, any movement, any bonus action? Uh, I just walk over to this side to get a better look. Let's go in. Oh, wait, not here. Uh, just to see what's going on down there. And that's pretty much my movement for now. All right, yeah, you move to the edge. You see a couple more of the young yetis and then this gigantic ancient yeti that are uh, in a fight down there, and you can just hear people's words yelling about the, the great Ezekiel. All right, the great Ezekiel is going to move. You can see it from here. Can I get five feet closer? And he's going to draw the magic dagger and chuck the magic dagger at this giant. All right, roll me an attack. That's a fat eight. <laughs> that does not hit. Your, your dagger, again, just spins wildly and is buried in the snow somewhere. Just... <sighs> Find it again. Um, okay. <laughs> 
That's it. <laughs> Jalkin. Okay. Uh, quick question about this gate here. Is it two doors that close with a bar across it, or is it a vertical lattice that drops down? Two doors that close and then a bar across it. Okay, good. That changes what I was going to do only slightly. Yeah, they are two 15-foot tall, heavy wooden doors. All right, uh, I will... Uh, is Helda somewhat strong-looking? I forget. She is. She's a very, very sturdy-looking dwarf. I will, I will, you know, uh, imply that she should get the brace, and I'm going to deal with the Yeti with help from my friends. And, uh, yeah, we're going to hit it with the Morningstar. That is a hit. And hopefully I don't get brained in return. All right. Cassandra. Okay, so because I don't really have that much upper body strength, can I just use Mage Hand to turn the mechanism? Uh, Mage Hand are works on like 15 feet, uh, 15 pounds. Yeah, these doors you are far too heavy for them. <sighs> okay, okay, I'm, go I'm going to try again. Oh, you're, it's just exhausting. These doors are just so heavy. You, you uh, do not feel that you can uh, do this on your own. Okay, I'm going to be like, uh, help, help. All right. With that, this Yeti is going to turn to you, Gus, since uh, you uh, came over and tried to attack it. Um, they attacked us. And you don't know what they were doing here. Maybe they were looking to trade. Uh, yeah, it uh, takes a swing at you and misses. Uh, these other yetis race up. When will they be willbies? And this guy's going to attack Yamadan. And you just see Yamadan take this huge claw right across his face, and he collapses down to the ground. I'm out of spells. Playing. All right, the guards. This guard is going to turn around and go after that Yeti. That's pretty good. So he hits that one. Moving all of them. All right, he is going to... He's actually going to try and uh, quickly scale down the wall. So he reaches the ground there, and then he is going to to there. Uh, these guys are going to actually, yeah, Cloud Full of Rock, seeing his compatriot down, is going to move over there, and that is going to be enough to take out this Yeti. And Alicia is actually going to take a swing at the big Yeti. Come on, Alicia. Not enough to hit, unfortunately. She swings, but the Yeti just bats her sword aside. Uh, and Helda is going to move over to here. And she looks at you, Cassandra, and says, I will help you. Together we can, we'll get this done. And now it is the large Yeti. Uh, row, row. So one to two, it is Jalkin. Three to four, it is Alicia. It is against Alicia for the first attack. That is enough to hit, and that is enough to put her down. She is on the ground. And second attack, he is going to turn and swing at you. Uh, so you take five slashing and six cold. Who does you cut out when you said... Uh, uh, Jalkin. 
I assumed it was me, yeah. Yeah, his first swing took down Alicia. His second swing took down Jalkin. I am officially at zero, guys. You also have a health potion on you. He's at no, zero. I don't. He was not a hired guard. I was a passenger. Uh, well, I am... Um... Rip? I, 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 no, I have one, and it can be used on him. Augustus, you are up. Okay, so this thing is attacking uh, the people in front of me. We're trying to close the gates, and there's this little shit yeti next to me. That right? is correct. Uh, and these two are trying to close this gate. Uh, the, yes. The uh, south side. All right, then I am going to move here. I'll take the attack of opportunity. All right. And I am going to use my attack action uh, to try and close the other door. Give me a strength check, please. So, strength or athletics? Oh, I have to check that. Uh, no, strength is better. We should be, well, it should be. Well, it'd be the exact same, same thing. Same. At worst case. Oh, another one! No, this it seems to be frozen stuck. You just cannot uh, get this door to move. Oh, okay, and done. Sithrin, you are currently at the top of the tower, uh, so you can see this large yeti and a couple of the and another small one seems to be down at the gate right underneath you. Okay, so it's actually like on the ground, not on the turret beneath me. Uh, yeah, it's it would actually be underneath the uh, the sort of gate. You would just be able to catch the edge. Of um, how big is the big guy? Like, how tall is he? Am I muted? Yetis oh. are large, so he could be up to about twelve feet tall. I mean, he is he is really really big. All right, just trying to figure out logistics here. So what's the difference in height between the turret I'm on now and the thing below it? Uh, you're 40 feet up right now. Oh, uh, wow. So yeah, the wall in between is 30 feet. So you could go down 10 feet on this sort of cross wall, and then you would be 20 feet above. OK, perfect. Um, do I have the movement now? Of course, I took off my glasses because I have something in my eye and now I can't see the blaze screen. You know what? I might just be able to make it. I want to try and like hop down onto this part here and like leap and like jump over the parapet and like leap, o leap with great axe. Yeah, I want to try and do that. All right. Yeah, you have the movement to do it. Ooh. So you race across, leap down, continue running, actually... and then in the air. Yeah, you just keep leaping. Okay. Um, um, where's my so, because that's free movement to go down 10 feet. So, yeah, you would be in the air about there. And Sweet. I still have Heidi Cat giving me advantage? I trust him? No, because yes, yes. she... Okay. No, she could... She, uh, I have commanded her to follow her and give you advantage. Yes, but uh, Heidi Cat is... Uh, doesn't have the movement to uh, to get there. Because okay. Heidi Cat is flying instead of leaping and falling. Okay, I will so use Heidi... my inspiration then, so I get advantage either way. Oh. And oh God, blind as a friggin' bat without my glasses, man. That right is the, a, yeah, the big one. that is a that is a hit as your axe just comes down from the shoulder down through the center of its back, and it sort of screams out in pain. Uh, with that, give me an athletics check with advantage uh, as you hit the ground, because your axe is really going to slow you down and uh, keep you from hitting the ground. Mm, athletics. <laughs> 22. Yeah, you land on the ground, no damage whatsoever. I'm channeling my inner barbarian, guys, my inner Alga. Do it! You know, like when pirates stab a sh uh, sail on a ship and then ride Yeah, ride that's their, basically uh, what I did. That doesn't hey, work in real life. Proven that works. Just proved it. 
Yeah, oh. and I'm probably going to go down on my next turn on the next round if this thing hits me. <laughs> but hey, it was cool. It was Regis. So you have just moved around the edge of this building and watched a dragonborn leap out of the sky and hack into this giant. Okay. Um... It is starting to look bloody as blood is pouring out of its wound across its shoulder and uh, the other uh, damage that it is. And uh, what about the gate? The gates are currently wide open as you see Gus and Cassandra feebly attempting to close them. Okay, now is there some, is it, are these just a, a standard wooden gate or is there some sort of like a mechanism or device that can shut them easily, like a counterweight? Nope, they are standard 15 foot tall wooden doors. Uh, you just need to roll better than a one or a two to get them closed. Okay. <laughs> unfortunately, that's what, that's, unfortunately, that's what Augustus and Cassandra have been rolling. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to attempt to try to close the gate. Uh, you did have Bjorn yell at you to get the uh, the bar as well. But yeah, so you can move and do you want to, uh, the gate with uh, Augustus is closest. So give me a uh, strength check, please. Let's check, okay. Thank God. Yes, with that, uh, you are able to get one of the two doors closed. Okay. All right. Uh, that is your movement. That is your action. Any bonus action? Uh, no bonus action. All right, Radigan, you are on top of this tower. What are you uh, doing? Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to let my uh, crossbow sort of fall into its sling on its side. Um, and I'm going to sort of plant one foot on the low parapet, one foot on the tall parapet, and start rain, start opening up this lantern and raining down uh, fire bolts down under the Yeti block. So 22 to hit. That hits, and with that, yes, uh, it's the back of its neck and its head just catch fire, and it grabs some snow and quickly sort of pats it in, but it is sort of screaming and screeching, and it, it looks terrified. I hope so. All right. With that, uh, Bjorn will hop down, and he will uh, grab you, Ezekiel, and just say, we have to get the bar to bar the doors. Oh, no. And as that happens, uh, through the still open door, uh, you see another Yeti shows up there. And will try and force its way in, but is not going to get too far. Top of the round, Duma. Duma saw uh, Sidorin uh, jump down onto the cross wall, and I was like, nah, I don't feel that lucky. I'm just going to limp and dash down the stairs, back out towards the giant Yeti. All right. Uh, so uh, that gets you 50 feet down the stairs. You have 30 feet uh, more, and you see a giant beam in the stairwell as well. All right, the great Ezekiel. All right. Um, this is a bad decision I'm about to make. Great Ezekiel is going to take a, Don't make it. one of the nice make. fancy daggers that he, uh, he purchased uh, back when we were starting the journey and <laughs> charge the Yeti. Wow, okay. Roll your All attack. All nine of my hit points. Wait, you got more hit points than me? I suppose. How do I buy? Uh, I, I, I go with your arcon, arcon yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why would it? Oh, I draw my rapier. I have a rapier. Yeah. I draw a rapier and try to get the rapier. If you're going to use right, the dagger, yeah. throw them. Yeah, you pull up the dagger and then you think, oh, wait, I have a rapier. 
And yes, you stab into this Yeti's leg. Roll your Nine. Nine piercing. All right. Yeah, it howls in agony as your uh, rapier just skewers right through the muscle in the back of its leg. Uh, it wasn't me. It was, um, it, it, it was Radigan. Yes, Radigan. He did it. As, you know, you stepped over Jalkin's sprawled body to do so. I would like to say I put myself between the Yeti and Jalkin's sprawled body. All Do you right. have healing word? Maybe you could heal him. I have healing word. Do you, you have the have spell, spell slots? I used them on horses. He saved the horses last session. That is one <laughs> successful death save. Uh, Don't worry, I'm seven. coming to I'm coming to save you. I will disengage. And I will stuff uh, my healing potion that I got into Radigan's mouth. Like, are you going to pour it in, or are you just trying to shove the whole potion in I, there? I know how potions work. Does she know how potions does work, she, Patrick? Though? I don't think she, she does. does. Because she does. usually that's two separate actions. Oh. It is two separate actions. You can move there, and I, for, I will allow you to unstop it. It will be your next turn to uh, pour a potion down his throat. Okay, fine. And with that, Heidi Cat flies in and around the Yeti's head. Oh, Heidi Cat! Oh, but I can just resummon her. But oh, Heidi Cat! Uh, this young Yeti is going to attack Sithrin. It is going to miss wildly. Oh, thank God. Uh, this other one is going to move in and attack. That is going to hit, and she crumples to the ground. Close the door! Close the door! And then it is going to move that away. Uh, you will get an attack of opportunity, Sithra. I'm sorry, I'm not very strong! Alright, uh, boom. That just hits and is enough to take it down as it tries to race past you. You instead just cut it down with your axe with one fell swing. And uh -huh. you see the guard that it was racing towards, just his eyes just sort of bug out wide. And then you see a look of determination on his face as he will now charge over and attack this yeti that was fighting you. And he is going to stab it with his spear. Uh, you see, this guard is going to run over here and he will uh, stabilize. Aisha, a cloud full of rocks, is going to stabilize the other guy over there, Yamadon. It is now the Yeti's turn. Uh, the Yeti uh, is going to look at you, uh, the great Ezekiel, and uh, I need you to give me a constitution what? saving throw, please, as its gaze just comes upon you and is just chilling to your very soul. I don't suppose this is a charm effect. Uh, it is not. Uh, uh, you take... Uh, you take 10 cold damage and I you are... Down. You collapse down to the ground. I'm not can frozen I, like a statue. Can I can I divide the healing you are potion paralyzed. between them and bring them both back to life on my next turn? Oh Christ. Nope. Uh Augustus. Alright, so um one question. Can I use my uh which door is closed? The north one or the south one? The north one. Alright. Uh, so I'm kind of at the halfway mark. Uh, can I attack the big one and use my movement and my back feet to kick the other door shut? 
Yes, but it would be disadvantage. And then I'm just going to try and kick the door shut. All right. So uh, you step over the unconscious body of Helda, and yep, you can uh, try and shut the door. Yep, and I will. And the uh, young Yeti that is there is actually going to try and uh, prevent you from doing that, and so it it will uh, try and make a contested strength check. But it's not its turn. Is it using it as a reaction? Because I just moved into its square, right? Either way, athletics to close the door. Yep, yeah, no, you're good. So, yep, yeah, uh, with that 10, yes, you are just able to uh, get that second door closed. Uh, and the young Yeti turns its attention to you. Any more movement? Any bonus action? Um, movement, no bonus action out of spells. Didn't charge, so done. All right. Sithrin. Uh, and this young, young, bleh, that thing is the only thing that's still left alive, correct? Uh, there's, Mary. yes, the other one has, you know, it dashed off and ran back into the city and is causing mayhem somewhere down over there. Oh, fantastic. And the big one's dead. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, no, the big one's still alive. I thought the big one was dead. I killed nope. a different one running past me then. Okay. Uh, gonna go yes, for the big you one killed then. one of the small ones. Uh, is uh, Heidi Cat close enough for the help action? Or Oh, yes, I have specifically okay. yes. told her to give the help action. Yeah, no, I remember that. Yeah. I just um, was checking the yep, she was flew down and is, uh Yeah, she flew down and is round the head. Nine, uh, really? Even with nine? advantage? Well, nine oh. damage. Like, it's a 20 nine to hit, damage. but it's nine damage. What is your death blow? <laughs> well, there we go. Yes! Thank God! Um, just, uh, quick, sweet, and simple, and I just, uh, bring it up over my head and just down into its shoulder and just, like, you know, cut into its sternum so it's, like, kind of, like, flopping in two pieces. You should have right. the head. Nah. Yeah. yeah, you put your axe back in the same wound that you sliced down as you slid down it and just pull, and there is a screech that is cut off as its throat just sort of fills with blood and you slice down in half and it collapses to its knees and then it falls down uh, onto the ground in front of you and is bleeding out profusely across the ground. About bloody time. It had exactly nine hit points. Oh, thank Yay! heavens. All right, with that, I'm going to say you guys will be able to kill off the last of the young yetis and uh, grab... Uh, you know, Duma would have grabbed one of the, the big bars out and he will just slam it down into the doors. Uh, and you guys can grab the bodies of Helda and get oh, them uh, back for Helda. inside. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Yeah, she is sputtering and, and bleeding and is not uh, stabilized. Uh, but uh, that is where we are going to end it for the night. With the door closed, there are still yetis that are pounding on the outside of it, but you are able to hold them off. For now. The snow um, falls, there are bodies littering the ground, and we will pick up there next week. Oh, oh first wow. Time, huh? Why are we all level one for this? Because <laughs> there's Why? like eight of us. No, but still, we are level ones are so squishy, especially level this, one wizards. This is uh, officially designed for level one characters. That's been fine so far. Like I'm fear filled, but I know I am we on the ground. Need this. Yeah, this dead people can't talk. See, this I'm is why Radican made for the made for the wall, so he didn't have to be in large yeti range. Radican, what Somebody are you playing? Somebody find my magical dagger, please. Yeah, what are you playing, uh, Chris? <laughs> are are you playing like a uh, warlock or something? Gunslinger, uh, I think. Warlock is Artificer. Artificer. There you go. Oh, because I was like, why are you casting fire bolts? 
But, but uh, uh, where is your turret, as they say? You know, that little crab thing that follows you around? Uh, that's going to be in a couple of levels, my friend. Okay, so with that, I would like to thank everyone who watched tonight. I would like to thank Superfan ZLT and Superfan Kane Phoenix uh, for chatting with us today. I don't think I'm missing anyone that was chatting. And I would like to thank our viewers. Apricot Drew Fruit, Captain Clueless, Commander Root, Electrical Longboard, Eraser TX, Yo Doja Leet, Lurks, Polize, Party Wipe Games, S1 Faka, and Zinc Hyber. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be doing Embers this week because Sunday is Mother's Day, but you can catch us next Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern Standard for Dragon Heist. Oh no, we just played, yeah, Dragon Heist. Uh, catch you then. Bye-bye.